This hangout on air is live. Hello, good morning, and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. Well, with this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge, we're looking at Jack Daniels Old Number Seven. Jack Daniels Old Number Seven. This company was founded in 1866. Now, this particular brand might have come out later, like 1873, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. It's old, okay? Not this recipe, though. This recipe came out around 1995 or later. The, uh, well, I guess it's the same recipe, but it was watered down to 80 proof. It used to be 90 proof. Went from 90 proof to 86 to 80, okay? So it was... Uh, but it's still a different recipe if you add more water, right? So that would be a different recipe. That's right. You've heard of Jack Daniels. If you haven't, you probably never heard of whiskey. It's a little bit, a little glimmer of daylight coming here on December 11th, 2018. All right. I intend to read all the comments, answer all the comments from yesterday. I haven't had a chance. I intend to uh, I intend to um, listen to all the songs in Rock and Roll Club that people posted last night. Somebody tagged me and was like, listen to this. It's for you. I said, I don't have time to listen to it tonight. I have something to do. <clears throat> so today I'll catch up on that. Alcohol eggs are in alcohol eggs. I already posted my old advertisement of Old Forester, which is what we're going to go up against today. Old Forester. That was an ad from 1959, I think. Something about you've earned it. You've worked hard. You've earned Old Forester. Tastes the best. 100 proof. Bottled and bond Old Forester. You said, no, that's 86 proof. That's right. 43% alcohol. Introduced in 1870. It was, and it was some sort of whiskey. Then in 1897, they had the bottled and bond law. So they had a bonded. In 1960, if you look at the advertisements, in 1960, they introduced the 86 proof. The milder version, okay? So we're saying now, you can get the bonded. Or the 86 proof, the milder, okay? So I would think that this would not be too much of a challenge because at 86 proof to 80, 43% alcohol to 40, they're both aged at least four years. Uh, but I think that that little bit of alcohol difference is going to make a difference. And plus, Jack Daniels, a sour mash bourbon whiskey or Tennessee whiskey, as they call it. And Old Forster is not that I can see. So that, that sour mash makes a little difference. All right. David Hunek says, hi, Ron. Hi to you, David. So, yeah, it's dark. Somebody told me, you need a new camera. I said, well, it's dark. It's a Dawn Busters. It's supposed to be dark we slowly watch the light enter the picture that's the whole purpose of the dawn the dawn that's how people pronounce the the, the name don in eastern new orleans like don seafood that's a famous louisiana seafood chain they don't say don they say dawn tell dawn come on over here we find oysters and don't, don't mess it up. I don't want them urchins to be right. Get the earl hot. And I mean hot. No, they buy your mom and them's peeling swimps. <laughs> strange accent, strange way of speaking. Okay, now, uh, over there. I'm sorry, over there. And east in the wall. Okay, so Old Forster, here we go. All right. Now, to me, I think Old Forster is better, but I don't know that because I never did a taste challenge. So, see, that's why you do a taste challenge. And then tomorrow, not tomorrow, can't do it tomorrow, but Thursday, the plan is to do 
Old Forester verse is Jack Daniels number seven. Not the old number seven, the number seven, the green label. The mysterious Jack Daniels green label, which is not listed on their website as part of the Jack Daniels family. Oh, but it exists. It most certainly exists. OF, Old Forester. And I was thinking about buying the last bottle at Matherns yesterday in, the, in that discount basket. I said, let me go buy. I said, well, I'll be doggone. Somebody bought it. I feel cheated. I cheated myself because I kept waiting. So that's that. Too bad for me. Okay. Jack Daniels. I made a little hiss. Strange. It's not carbonated. Oh, but it hissed when I opened it. Is this thing is this thing fermenting in the bottle? Does it, have, does it have living yeast? Tennessee Sour Mash Whiskey, distilled and bottled by Jack Daniels Distillery, Lynchburg, Tennessee. I went on a tour there last year. It was cool. I liked it. It was expensive, $17. Was it worth it? Not really. Am I glad I went? Yeah, because I wouldn't have gone otherwise. Mellowed in sugar maple charcoal. They take sugar maple and they burn it and make the charcoal and crunch it up into little granules and pack it in these big barrels. Tight, tight, tight. They didn't burn the, char the the wood that day when we were there. They showed us a video, but some, they say sometimes when you come, we'll be burning it as we need it. Matured in handcrafted barrels. First, they drip it through the charcoal. This 10 foot column of charcoal to filter it, or as they call it, mellow it. Then they mature it in barrels. They say, we don't age it, we mature it. <laughs> how long? We don't say how long. They said the, the man said they don't give an age statement because somehow you got to pay taxes on it. If it's an age statement, a specific statement, you have to pay a certain amount of tax. But if you don't make an age statement, you don't have to. That's what he said. They said, but if you don't put an age statement, it has to be at least four years. So you can kind of extrapolate the age, the number of years age without giving a specific statement. They said it was something to do with taxes. They didn't want to pay it. Tasted by masters until deemed ready. That's what they say. They don't have a specific age. They just keep tasting it, tasting it. Voila! It's it's ready. Although it, it ages differently in different parts of the barrel house, you see. So the ones that are down in the center at the bottom, they go in a green barrel. The green bottle, the green label, because they say it doesn't get enough heat, so it doesn't mature correctly. And it's not, it is at least four years because it doesn't have an age statement on the bottle. But um, they say it's a little younger and it's like, they probably use it for blending with other barrels to get a specific type of JD. But they said the green label is the inferior, what they call inferior. And what I call unavailable, <laughs> awarded many awards since 1904. All right, and this is the, the 100th and 50th anniversary bottle. Every day we make it, we'll make it the best we can, says Jack Daniel, who died from blood poisoning, from kicking a safe and his toe got jammed and broken and it got infected. <laughs> You say, well, that's kind of a minor injury, isn't it? Yeah, it is, except in around the year 1910, when the med medical profession was so primitive, it's not too advanced these days either, but it was really bad. Then simple infection, you die. So that happened to Jack Daniel. Then his family decided to sell it. They sold the company. They sold the company in uh, 1956 to Brown Foreman, the people that make Old Forrester. Hey. So the little guy bought the big guy. All right. And this one, they don't give all this like folksy, whimsical. I'm saying that Jack Daniels is folksy and whimsical. It is, but it's it's accurate. This is just more straightforward. But either way, the cut goes, it doesn't matter to Brown Foreman. They're making money because they own both brands. 
All right. Ooh, yikes, I poured too much for whatever this is. See, I can't even remember now what it is. But, but where's the daylight? Come on, daylight, what's wrong with you? Better safe than sorry. Well, that does taste like Jack Daniels with that sourdough cornbread. Sourdough cornbread. Yeah, well, that's what it tastes like. John and Neil says, good morning, Ron. Good morning to you, John and Neil I got a little bit of chores to do today. Not too many, thankfully. Thursday more, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. But uh, we'll see. Friday night, we got Kurabari Marsala examination for Kurabari Marsala. I do like the Taylor Marsala. I like it. I do like it. I like the Paul Masson Marsala. I like it. I do like it. I should buy some more. But it seemed like the Krabari is a little better. You say, oh, you're dumb. It's from the same company. Yeah, it is. But it does, it's all from Taylor Wine Company in Canandaigua, New York. I understand that in the Finger Lakes region. I understand all that. But it doesn't taste the same, now. Some variation on it. So that's exciting for Friday night, 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 Eastern, Krabari Marsala. Examine Krabari Marsala. All right. Yeah, I intend to get the Palmasan and the Palmasan Madeira and the Fairbanks and the Sheffield and just keep going and going and going and exhausting it. But then I won't be exhausted. I'll just want to try more and then I want to try more and then I won't be exhausted and then I want to try more and then I won't be exhausted. I want to try more. You say that's an endless loop. You're in a rat race. You're in a hamster cage. You're just going around and around and around. You're in a rat race. And alcohol, a beer, wine, and liquor rat race. I know, but I like being in the rat race. It's fun. I enjoy it. Okay, I'm really excited to try that Krabari, says John and Lily. All right, okay, exuberant. Gotta calm down. Must land the excitement plane. <sighs> it's done. I get excited about hobbies. I like hobbies. That's why they're hobbies, because they're fun. You like doing them, right? Comic books. I'm irritated right now because Batman number 55 never came in. They always keep renumbering it like every two or three years. They'll say, okay, we're starting over again. We rebooted it, but that wasn't any good. Let's do it. <laughs> what, what I think what they decided is after about two years, whatever young person gets into it will get tired of it and abandon it. So then they'll reboot it again. And they're trying to keep the industry going because comic books are not popular anymore, really. So it's just kind of hanging on, right? Then they decided to go twice a month. Every two weeks, they come out with a new one to keep people interested so they don't fall away. I don't think it's really working. They did that with Superman, the Superman comic books, but then that they went back to monthly. But it never came in. And then I called DC Comics. I said, what happened? Batman num number 55 never came in. It didn't? I said, no. I got 56. Now I got 57, 58. They said, oh, we're going to send you a replacement. I said, okay, never came in. I got to call him today. If it doesn't come in today, I'm going to call him. I know what they're going to say. We don't have any more. We'll give you a credit. Well, I didn't subscribe so I can get credits. And then it makes me lose money because I got to go to the shop in New Orleans and get the book, and it's going to cost full price. The subscription, you get 40% off. Okay, enough rant and rave. about You're the energizer bunny of alcoholic beverages. Yes, I agree with that. Frenetic. Manic, I'm manic, I'm manic. John Ratchin says, good morning from San Francisco. Oh, good morning to you from San Francisco. It is 4.03 a.m. over there. Oh, wow, baby. I've been to San Francisco. I went to three Giants games in a row there, the Rangers versus Giants, three games in a row. I smelled those garlic fries. Oh, they smelled so good. The taste. I thought, nah, they're not that great. <laughs> they're kind of bland, but the the aroma was something. All right. <sighs> that Dungeness crab was good, though. Hoo wee. And that Anchor Steam beer on draft at that Italian restaurant at Fisherman's Wharf. Whoa. Now, you might say, Fisherman's Wharf, that's just a tourist place. I knew I was a tourist, so it worked. See? Duke the Alien Wizard says, I want two different wall... 
I want to. Oh, I went to two different Walmarts today and all the Rolling Rock was gone. They don't sell Rolling Rock at our Walmart anymore. No bottles, no cans, nothing. I was really shocked. Yeah, they discontinued it like they did here. Yeah, they they killed it. I can get it at other stores, but not at Walmart. I know people in California drink Rolling Rock because it's cheap and it's also considered a really good cheap beer. $14.99 for a 30 pack. That's unheard of in Louisiana, but it really shocked me that it was all gone. Hey, Walmart's a weird company, man. It's all done on computer. If they see any kind of deficit in sales, it's gone. <laughs> and it wasn't keeping up. Same thing happened to Bud Select, Budweiser Select, or Select from Budweiser. They keep changing their name. Man, they had it at Walmart over here for years. And one day it was gone. And I talked to the, the uh, bulk merchandiser for Anheuser-Busch, Southern Eagle. I said, what happened? They said, oh, they killed it. <laughs> killed it in this whole parish. You got to go to St. James Parish to get it. He said, it sells like crazy in St. James Parish, but over here we couldn't give it away. We could have put a sign, take it free. They wouldn't have taken it. Yeah, Rolling Rock is popular in um, Georgia. In Louisiana, it's not really popular, although the Quart cans seem to do all right. Those single cans at racetrack, Exxon, on the run station or uh, Circle K maybe. Okay, I think that's Jack Daniels, but I, 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 because it's got that sourdough bread, that sourdough bagel, that mellow charcoal, that wood. That's what Jack Daniels is. It's mild and mellow, mild and mellow. It's 80 proof. Now you would think, oh, people turned their back on it when they dropped it from 90 proof to 80 proof. They ruined it. Actually, the, the, the sales have gone up, have gone up. Now the old timers are mad. You know, they ruined it. They ruined it. Maybe. But the general public likes it better now. It's milder and mellower. Okay. Oh, this one is so candy. Candy says, I like my liquor mellow. Picking up barrel, picking up wood, charred wood. I'm picking up the aroma generally associated with whiskey, as you would imagine. My uncle, he says, you know, bourbon, all that is is moonshine. <laughs> it's like, why well, you got to ruin everything? <laughs> but he's right. That's it. It is what it is. It's moonshine aged in a charred, new, never before used charred barrel. And you say, what's moonshine? Corn whiskey. <laughs> you might be telling me, you're wrong. Bourbon is a fancy drink for fancy people. Don't cut. Don't. Don't you come on here early in the morning and say bad things about bourbon. I wasn't saying bad things about bourbon. I'm telling you what it really is. Why don't you study American history? Go back and learn about the Whiskey Rebellion of the 1790s. Learn about the Appalachian Mountains and learn about the cornfields in Kentucky and Tennessee and learn about the Mississippi River in New Orleans and Bourbon Street. Then you'll say, oh, he's right. I didn't write the history. I'm telling you about the history. I did not live the history. I'm living the current history. <laughs> but they like that red liquor and they call it red. They called it red liquor. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. The Whiskey Scout. Oh, it's the Whiskey Scout. Morning, Ron and John. Hey, the Whiskey Scout. John said, I never heard JD described as mild and mellow. Good morning, Robert. Well, you've heard it now. <laughs> Here we go. Taste challenge time. Toot, toot, toot. Get on the whiskey train. The whiskey train. Mm hmm. Whoa. <laughs> that is so woody. That is so woody. That is so charred. That is so what I just said. Okay. Ooh, that's got me a little confused now. I'm getting a little worried. <laughs> I'm a little worried about this Salazzo fella. All right. Mm-hmm. 
That's even woodier and more bolder. And it is so cornbread. <laughs> what do you want, Junior? Hush puppies, Daddy. Ain't got time for that crap. But it does taste like hush puppies, I'm afraid to admit. <laughs> hey, you, you know how sometimes... <laughs> You know, you know, sometimes you want to just drink whiskey that tastes like a hush puppy. <laughs> uh oh, man. Now, see, I have to think the proof, the proof, the proof is in the proof. 43% alcohol versus 40%. And I think that's going to make a difference. I pray it makes a difference. Please make a difference. I'm begging you to make a difference. All right. Yeah, it's a little sharp cut to it. Whoa, some people hate Jack Daniels. See, I can understand that. I can understand that because there's certain things about it that will make you hate it. Some people hate ABBA, the band ABBA, and I understand that. So I can understand when people hate things that I don't hate. See what I mean? Well, the one on my right could be your left. Has a little more char, a little more wood. It seems like it has a little more heft and body to it. So I'm, I'm thinking it's old Forrester. Price won't really matter in this, in this. Con particular situation because I think Old Forrester and Jack Daniels is pretty much the same price if I'm not mistaken. So I guess you could just pick what you like. Price won't matter. So it'll be a true contest. Won't be a winner by default. David Hunek says, I like Abba, Agnita, Benny, Bjorn, and Anna Frida. I like them too. And then you might say, that ain't nothing but Europop. Yeah, I know that. I like Euro Pop. <laughs> Although I think their best stuff came out at the end, at the bitter end, the bitter end. Kind of like the Beatles in a way. Some of their best stuff came out at the bitter end. <laughs> All right. Move over once, move over twice. Oh baby, this whiskey is so nice. Mm. All right, so I'm gonna say this is Jack Daniels. Are these are these are these two whiskeys profoundly different from one another? No, they are not. They are not. So I don't understand why one person would say. You know why a person would say, oh, I hate Jack Daniels. Uh, ugh, I spit on you. And then they would say, oh, but Old Forrester's awesome. That's just awesome. Or vice versa. Good old JD, baby. Woo, JD, baby. That's what you hear a lot of people saying, right? JD, baby, woo. And then the Old Forrester people looking down on them like, oh, these children. I'm 64 years old and I drank Old Forrester. I'm dignified. I wear a bow tie. I wear a straw hat. They wear muscle shirts and they have long hair and they listen to loud, obnoxious music. That's the Jack Daniels people. Why don't they go listen to the Rolling Stones? I'm going to listen to something dignified like the electric light orchestra <laughs> oh me all right and my old forest is so much better even though it's practically the same when you do a blind taste test <laughs> i don't know though i'm getting this very disconcerting and discombobulated 
this combobulating and quite worrisome, I want to say worrisome sourdough thing here. I'm telling you, I'm getting more confused as I go on. And it's not the alcohol talking, it's the flavor talking. I don't know, man. Which one do I prefer? I guess I prefer both. <laughs> ELO is pretty dignified. Old Forest is 1999 in my area. JD is 21.99 to 24.99. I'm gonna have to do a. I'm gonna have to do a survey of this area because you know I never really did that. I never really took that into account. Maybe it is cheaper. Old Forest. Jack Daniels has bad banana. Says the Whiskey Scout. Bad banana. Bad banana. You mean like overripe and they're going to, like you should use it in a banana pudding? Hold on a minute. Bad banana. Don't put these thoughts in my mind. Don't cloud my judgment. Although, <laughs> wish you wouldn't have mentioned that. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I'm down to the bottom. FZ says, I'm enjoying some Canadian club right now. Oh, yeah, baby. I got some Canadian club six-year-old in my cabinet. They don't make the six-year-old anymore. And I got some 12-year-old, courtesy of John Anili of Georgia Beer Reviews. Whiskey Scout said, ha ha, that's what I do. Oh, that's what he does. He plants things in people's mind and makes the challenge even much more troubling and challenging. Thanks for uh, making this even more worse. So I'm going to say, and my confidence level at this point is like at nearly zero. And I'm serious. I really have no confidence at this time. So you can say, well, that's just flipping a coin. It's a 50-50 shot. That's right. It's a 50-50 shot. Pretty good odds, unless you're in an airplane. Um, I think based on the little more robust nature of the one to my right, that this is Jack Daniels. It's a little milder, a little. Holy smokes, old Forrester. Well, don't blame me. Blame Brown Foreman for making two whiskeys that are priced similarly, but not exactly like John Lee says, and not tasting that different when you do a blind taste test and you don't know which is which. So I cannot take the blame here. I, I cannot... Cannot and I will not. <laughs> hey, don't blame me. I'm just taste challenging it. But this goes to show you, and we were talking about this off air. My friend David, you know, with the big beard, we were talking about this. He was saying, yeah, these guys at, at this place he goes to, I don't want to name the place. They might watch and get angry. <laughs> they probably know who I'm talking about. But they're like dedicated Jack Daniels. They have, I couldn't believe they have dozens of empty bottles of Jack Daniels. It's like a display. It's almost like a Jack Daniels museum. These people are prolific, and I mean prolific, Jack Daniels drinkers. It's amazing and troubling at the same time, but mostly amazing because I'm not drinking it, so I'm not that troubled. But he says, oh, they won't budge. They'll never try anything you know, new. They just, they're locked into Jack Daniels. But he said, I could bring old Forrester and they would say, no, 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 you know, they, but he said he could maybe trick them, you know, and I believe you could trick people with it. It's that close. Like they'd say, you know, you could make them think it was Jack Daniels and they'd be like, this is what I'm talking about. The real stuff. JD, old number seven, baby. Don't give me that old man, old Forrester. What do you think? I'm old. Go tell your grandpa to drink it. And then you tell him later. Ta-da, that's really old Forrester. I knew that. I was just playing along. <laughs> okay, John and Ely says, uh, I think JD is more bold, despite the lower proof. Of course, I'd have to do a blind taste test challenge of my own, to be sure. And I just did it, and I bombed. I bombed. But like I say, I don't take the blame. I wasn't kidding around. You say, all you do is kid around talk about ob and old rock bands, and you're not saying, No. I don't agree with that. I do kid around and all of that business, but um, 
I place the blame squarely on the two whiskeys. I don't think they're that different and I couldn't tell them apart and I just described them very carefully what I was picking up and I was not able to separate one from the other, not in any, not in any meaningful way. And I'm going to stick with that conclusion. I'm going to say, oh, Forrester, Jack Daniels, you should only shop. Well, if, if the price is really different, like you're saying, if it's five dollars difference, there's no there's no. There's no argument. Then Old Forrester wins by default. OK, if the price is different, I got to scout this area. Scout whiskey. Scout. I got to scout this area and just to be sure I'm, I'm not going to worry about it too much. But I, I'm OK. Then whatever one's cheaper wins. If it's 10 cents cheaper, I would just go with the cheaper one. Forget the proof. Who cares? That's 3% alcohol. That doesn't matter. 43, 40, big deal. So it's a tie. It's a tie, but the lower price wins. So there you go. Uh, and in two days, we'll try the Jack Daniels Green label. Now, I think, 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 don't know. I think the green label will be a little more discernible because of its supposed inferior qualities. Although my friend David in the blind and his, when we did the review, he didn't think it was inferior. He didn't think it was inferior. Now the whiskey scout says, Oh yeah, that stuff's bad. <laughs> he thinks it's bad. Um, some people probably do. Now it's funny because in Texas, the green label is the standard Jack Daniels. Because I got a friend that's been living in the woodlands. Well, he moved to Houston and then later the woodlands, but he he'd been living there 20 years. And he says, uh, I was talking to him about the green label green label on the phone, and he said, uh, Well, isn't that the regular one? To my Paul. Oh, FC says I'm that way with Evan Wayne's green label. Okay. Yep, yeah, that's charcoal filtered. See, and the regular Evan Wayne's doesn't say that char that's charcoal filtered. Might just be chill filtered. Uh, but 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 um. So Paul was talking to me on the phone, and I was mentioning the green label, green label, and all this with the gold writing. And he said, "Well, but that's that is the regular Jack Daniels, right?" I said, "What are you talking about?" He said, "I mean, that's the standard one." And you knew about the black label. Yeah, I know about that black label. But he said, "Isn't that the standard, the green?" I said, "No, that's like a specialty model." He said, not in Texas. <laughs> Every store in Texas, that's the big normal Jack Daniels. And I noticed that myself when I was over there. And he said, yeah. And then my father was telling me, he remembered back in the 1970s, let's say like around 1973, when he was going to some dance. They used to go to dances. They always said, we're going to a dance. Do they have dances anymore? A dance. And he wanted to buy uh, some whiskey. So he went to the liquor store, or in Louisiana, meaning the grocery store. And he wanted to get Jack Daniels because he figured everybody would like that. And he said, oh, the green label's cheaper. He told the, he told the liquor man behind the counter, give me that green label. Is it any different? And the, and the man said, no, not really. <laughs> so he said, give me the cheap one. <laughs> now, so uh, and my, I said, well, what did people say about it at the, at the dance? My father said, uh, no, nothing. They drank it. And then he told me a story about one guy drinking too much, getting so drunk and passed out and everything. He said, but uh, they didn't complain. They just drank it. You know? All right. Uh, we only have the black label up here in Washington. Yeah, I think it's very rare, the green label. John and Neely says, since we're all here, <laughs> I think we should do a future examination of the Jim Beam repeal batch. I bought a bottle yesterday. I agree with that. And I plan on buying some Jim Beam repeal, but not until next year, 2019. So give me a chance and I'm going to try to do that. There's a reason I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Okay. So I'm pretty sure Walmart will still have it for $13.97. But if I'm able to get the, the bottle in three weeks and I see no reason that I wouldn't be able to, then we can do the examination. I agree. And the Woodford Reserve in the Blantons, <laughs> trying to rope y'all into that. JD Green Label is a little rough, said the Whiskey Scout. He said, I'm out working until next week. No, uh, Whiskey Scout, we talking about in January, probably, if 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 late, if not later than that, it'll be a, it'll be a while out. I'm so backed up. I'm so backed up on uh, liquor 
$13.97. I paid $16.99. Oh, woof. Sorry about that. Walmart right over there. I can almost see it. I think if I got up and looked out that window in a certain way, I could see Walmart. It, uh, yeah, $13.97 here. Yeah, baby. They had a lot of it. I don't think it's going to sell out. It's weird because Walmart has a lot of whiskeys that some of the more specialty stores here don't have. So you really have to shop around in this town because it's it varies. Every store is different. I'm telling you right now. Same with beer and wine. Not so much wine. I thought I was getting a good deal, he says. Well, you might have been in for Georgia, but for Louisiana, you've been getting a raw deal because I saw it for $13.97 at Albertsons. That must have been their suggested price for Louisiana because Alperson says, we have a sale, $13.97. Of course, if you monitor Albertsons, their sales are perpetual. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's always on sale. It's never not on sale. Certain things, which violates the Better Business Bureau protocols, but I'm sure they could care less. Uh, I will have to acquire some Blanton. I haven't had any in a while. I was very pleased because someone gave me a full bottle. <laughs> great, great present. I didn't have to pay for it. And then, then she gave me a full bottle of Woodford Reserve. I mean, she had drank a couple of ounces, and I mean, maybe two ounces of each bottle. So I said, I scored over here Saturday night, if one should use that word, I scored. I scored, uh, you know what I'm saying, the whiskeys. So it was very nice, very nice. John and Ilya said, I love Blanton's. Blanton is single barrel, so it will differ somewhat, yes. And it's the first single barrel whiskey offered. They claim, the company claims, this is the first single barrel whiskey on the market, 1984. And then everybody else copied us. That might be true. That might be true. Now, when I was on a Jack Daniels tour, they said single barrel is mostly a gimmick. <laughs> they they have it. But he said, that's what the tour guy said. Nah, that's, he didn't use that terminology, but the way he explained it, he was saying to us, it's really a gimmick. It doesn't mean a whole lot, but people think it does. So they pay a lot because they think it's special. But his opinion was it really isn't special. But if you can make people think it is, then they'll buy it. All right. <laughs> All right. That's the end of this taste challenge. So now it's daytime pretty much and uh, time to move onward and upward. It was a very exciting taste challenge. I'm sorry I got it wrong, but uh, I do not apologize. I blame the company. <laughs> blame the company. All right. And I'm gonna end this review by this examination, this taste challenge, I'll get it right, by saying y'all come on down to Southeastern Louisiana. <laughs>